I accidentally went backwards on a one-way road. One city, two by three sites. Welcome to Waco. If any of you have watched Fixer Upper with Chip and Joanna Gaines, you will be familiar with Waco. One of the things I went there for was cupcakes. No, for real, I take my cupcakes really seriously. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, we stopped at Magnolia Table. I had read about it online the night before, and someone said you need to put in a reservation, but you have to do it like two months ahead of time. I was too late, because I was looking at that the night before. But we didn't wait very long. One, two, three, four. This behind me, this here bag, is the electronics bag where you put your phone so nobody's sitting at these tables on their phones, but they're talking with people. We try to be present and engage and have conversation with each other, even when we're filming or doing things like that. We want those moments to be special, and this brunch was really special. <laughs> I had the French Toast Crunch. It was like cereal on toast, and it was amazing. <laughs> you know a donut is good when you're licking the frosting from the bowl. They were all so good. Comment below, do you like to sweat? Comment below if you like sweating two? or not. Seriously? <laughs> 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 On a donut, do you like the cake part of it, or is it the frosting better? I didn't come into it with too many expectations, but considering who it's by, they seem like they do everything, and they do it well. If you've been following our National Parks adventure, you know on road trips a lot of times we like to stop at national monuments or other points of interest along the way. There is a national monument right here in Waco and uh, just kind of cool how a couple of guys in 1978 uh, stumbled across some bones. It turned out to be a, the femur of a mammoth. We found out it's not a woolly mammoth like we would have in Minnesota. It's a Colombian mammoth, which is even bigger. They took it to Baylor University. It became an archeological dig. They do offer tours and it was definitely worth it for us. Uh, Ranger Kim did an amazing job. Baylor was the first partner, 1978. It doesn't cost any more to get a guided tour. You just have to wait until the time when the tour guide is going and you join a small group and they walk you through and talk about the land. Walking us over to the site and explaining a lot of the history. Um, the discovery of the mammoth bones. We saw big teeth. <laughs> and um, some of the science behind everything. And then you get to go into the building where the bones are. Over the course of a number of years, they found more and more sets of bones. They did a number of things to protect and preserve the site and um, create a space where they could continually dig. They're actually still excavating. So you can go in and see people brushing and dusting off the bones and like measuring and doing stuff like that. They said it's a really long process and even when they finish those bones, it could be years before they even get to the other spots. And then somehow they also found a camel skeleton. So camels were actually first in North America. And then somehow they migrated to Africa. <laughs> How are you supposed to do that? First, they're one of the slowest animals on Earth. Second, they would die on the way. Three, how do they even do that? Oh, those are for a souvenir, we got some rocks because we filled up a bag for $5. It was really fun to let them just choose all the different colors and all the polished rocks were really pretty. It's like a little bag of treasure. There was like an image of what they found out or like they guessed how tall it would be and it's so tall. So tall. After the mammoth, spot. We wanted just a bit of coffee. We went to the Magnolia coffee shop and I got the 1903, 1907, 1905 iced latte 
and we all shared a decaf that was so good. While we were ordering our coffee, the girl at the counter asked if we had gotten the QR code. I tend to be like, no, I don't want it. But she's like, as you're shopping, you'll get discounts. Okay. I really didn't expect it, honestly, to come in very handy, but it totally did. Even the cupcakes were discounted. Who doesn't love that? It was really great with kids because you have all these things that you can just play. And so that was the cool thing about the silo district is you didn't really have to spend money if you didn't want to. We sipped our cold coffee and played games and played cornhole or bags or whatever it is you call it. Bean bag toss. Anyway, we played that. We didn't keep score because I was playing with mom. <laughs> <laughs> I won, by the way. I didn't know you were keeping score. Anyways, it was fun. And I love how they transformed that space. There's all sorts of cute buildings. I loved it. We got this snow cone thing. It was blue raspberry. Our tongues got very blue. Very blue. And then we got cupcakes. I've seen them on the show. I've seen her bake stuff and I'm like, I need that in my mouth. And my curiosity was piqued about these cupcakes. Could they seriously be as good as they looked? The answer is yes. So I got a chocolate cupcake and I loved it. Cupcakes were really good. They taste so good. I don't know how it's possible, honestly. They were fantastic. And then I went shopping. Not intense shopping, but I wanted to check out a few things. I've been looking for like a pastry thingy. You know, it has the metal and then the butter doesn't melt when you're making pastries. Anyway, I got one of those and a frosting spreader. And while I did that, the boys played wiffle ball. There's a really cool mini wiffle ball stadium. We played wiffle ball. Yeah, it was really fun. Fun fact, the spot where the wiffle ball field is, there's a statue of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. And Babe Ruth actually played in a small game uh, right there in that same spot in Waco. Silo District was really, really cool. I wanted to go to this taco place called Torchies. It's a really fun spot. They have really creative tacos. The people were super nice and helpful. I got something called the trailer park, but I got it trashy, where they just take out lettuce and put in uh, nacho cheese, I think. For more dieting tips, don't follow me. So I was like, no, I don't wanna, I don't want a taco. And they're like, are you sure? And we're like, nah, I'm good. But I ended up getting chips and salsa just in case but they were like not hungry. We drove from there back to the hotel. We get in and the boys are both like, we're hungry. We were starving and we so regretted not getting a taco there. I mean, we still got chips and salsa, but with the salsa, even if you take a little dab, it burns your tongue, like not like burns, just like it's so spicy. It was all really good and we had fun just hanging out. I accidentally went backwards on a one-way road. There was this road none of us knew. We all thought it was like a two-way road. And so I pulled into a parking lot and went to pull out going the opposite direction so I could park on that side of the road. And it was a one-way. So we nudged out just a tiny bit. Luckily, I hadn't started driving down it when cars started coming. And then of course, we see people in that lane that we thought was going in the opposite direction. And this lady yelled at me. But like, you can't hear her and I kind of like, when people are like yelling in their cars and you can't actually hear them. But we could lip read perfectly what she was saying and she was yelling at us that it was a one way road. And I like to think she was doing it cheerfully. Like, y'all, it's a one way road. I think she was being nice. No way. She was like, turn around, it's a one way. Turn around. She has a British accent. It's one way. She sounds polite. Then we went in the correct direction, went all the way around the block to park, and then I got confused because there was a truck facing us in that spot where I wanted to park. And I was like, wait, I thought this was a one-way road. So when I went over to park, the truck realizes it's a one-way and he pulls into a parking lot and turns around so he could park the proper way. It was pretty funny. So, my bad. Our third site in Waco was the Dr. Pepper Museum. Dr. Pepper, you make the world taste better. Well, we paid a little bit extra for the boys to create their own sodas. You can buy your tickets on site at the Dr. Pepper Museum, but you do have to reserve a time to make your own soda. My ingredients were banana, grape, and watermelon. In the 
factory they would be doing this all by hand, so they'd actually have eight bottles. My soda, it's called Sir Fizz. I called it Mr. Bubbles. I made my drink, I tasted it, I was like, man, this is really good. Blue raspberry, watermelon, and cherry. I could totally sell this. And then I went and had Dr. Pepper, and I'm like, it tastes literally like Dr. Pepper. Really good. Then we went to the museum, which is also really cool. So I grew up a little bit near Detroit, Michigan, and we used to have Verner's all the time, and I did not know the history of it until I came here to Waco, Texas. 1885, Dr. Pepper. 1866 is when Verner's was made. Kind of late to the party there, Dr. Pepper. I thought you would met. Seems a bit true. <laughs> They found the old um, artesian well that had been in that factory. And that was kind of cool to look down. It's so deep. No. Gross. They talk about hot springs and soda springs. We've been to there. Sometimes you need to impregnate things. So yeah, thanks for watching. My final thoughts on Waco are go there if you can, when you can. You might not have much time, you might not have much money, um, but you can experience a destination, you can experience a city in just a couple days and have a really good time. Waco was really awesome. I would definitely go back if I could. Let me help you. Let me help you. What happened? Who did this to you? I think it was Werner. <laughs> Hello, my oh. name is Dr. Charles Alderton. The most folks just call me Doc. You know, I haven't worked here for some time. He's been in here so Dr. long, Charles he doesn't Alderton. even know what year it is. The most folks just call me Doc. He thinks the Louisiana Purchase you know, is about to happen. I haven't worked here for some time. Poor guy.